Hello, thank you for joining me. This morning I'm at Stoke-on-Trent station. Just got myself a coffee for the journey ahead. Um, we're not going too far today, but I just thought we'd start the video here at Stoke-on-Trent because I've always liked this station and just thought it'd be nice to um, include it on a video. It was opened in 1848 by the North Staffordshire Railway. It's, um, it's only got two through platforms and over there there's a bay platform. Whenever I come here, what I do, if I'm travelling sort of in the morning, or sort of around lunchtime, I go in this place, get a coffee. But if I'm travelling later on in the day, as in sort of around dinner time or fancy a pint, go in that place there. It's called Bod. It's really a very small pub, but it's quite nice and it's got lots of different beers. It's owned by the Titanic Brewery, so um, I'm not going to go in there now, but I do frequent there. It's a really nice little pub. It's kind of got a little bit of a Berlin Wall down the middle, um, because one side is... Um, this side is inside the ticket barriers, the other side is outside the ticket barriers um, because this station does have ticket barriers, personally I think it shouldn't because it's not a metro station. We're now going to go over the bridge, so if you're in Stoke on Trent, do go to Bod for a pint and um, they do these really nice giant Natural. sausage rolls for dinner. Now most people crossing to the other side will use the underpass, Doors opening. but there's this Lift footbridge here up. which um, doesn't have any stairs, so I thought we'd go that way for a bit of fun. Doors closing. I think this was probably originally like a luggage or a cargo bridge originally, but it's now become the disabled access to the other side of the platform, which is you know quite good, good use of a bridge and it gives us a nice view of the station when, doors opening. when the doors open, which they are slowly doing. Here we are. So we're now kind of up in um, the girders of the station. You can see the station down there. Got about five minutes until my train to crew comes. So um, we shall perhaps walk down to the end of the platform and have a look at the uh, bay platform. So now I've just got to wait for the lift to come to get us down. So it's a bit weird this bridge in the fact there is no stairs at all. Bridge left. There's that mysterious door over there. I'm not sure where that goes but it's not public. So um, let's now go down to the platform. Doors opening. There we go. Lift going down. Doors closing. So, I've said we're going to crew today, indeed we are, and this is an episode of Miniature Railway Britain, and I know yet we haven't found the Miniature Railway because um, we're just at Stoke-on-Trent station. We Platform level. We did do the miniature railway in, the, in this area at Newcastle Underline a few weeks ago. So today, though, we're going to Door crew. Opening. And that crew, there is Crew Heritage Centre, which has quite a nice little miniature railway. And um, it's also an interesting heritage centre. So that's why I thought we would go there today. Now, I know I said we'll go down to the other end of the platform, but first, I just wanted to quickly show you something down this end of the platform. Um, if my train suddenly pulls in, I will have to run, but I don't think it's due just yet. I think I've got about three more minutes, so um, it's a bit bit rushed, but, you know, plenty of time. There's something a bit weird up here, so let's go and have a look. If anyone knows why it's here, then, you know, do comment and tell me. Look, there's a giant hand. And look, just to show how big it is, it's bigger, it's taller than me. It's it's this huge hand with like a statue of what looks to be like half a lion, half human in the middle of it. So, no idea what that's about, but if you know, you know, do comment and tell me. It's a bit windy out here, let's get back under the cover of the overall roof. I do like stations with overall roofs, it makes, um, there's just something nice about them, it kind of conjures up that, you know, sense of long distance travel to an age, uh, you know, where railways travelling, you know, was a real adventure. Now people just jump on trains and they're not too bothered about what type of train they're on or what to look out the window. They just want to get from A to B. So, yeah, it's a very attractive building. I can't show you it because it's on the other side, but across the road from the station is the North Staffordshire Hotel, which would have been built around the same time. Um, that's the problem with ticket barriers, I can't just run in and out of the station to show you, which is a bit annoying. So that's odd. That's why I got my coffee, so 
they're the two I recommend. Let's just go down the other end of the platform. What's quite interesting, you see that arch? That's the main entrance next to the station. It's actually a war memorial. It says in memory of the men of the North Staffordshire Railway who fell in the Great War between 1914 and 1918. So I wonder how many regular commuters noticed that. And just coming down to the other end of the platform. I've, I've got a bit longer than I thought. I've got five minutes to my train to due. So um, I'll probably just point out this end of the platform, then I'll stop filming until I get to crew. So here's a class 323. I like these units, they're quite cool. I like the sound they make when they pull off. Um, it's not about to go, so we can't film it going. But the other thing I do like about them, I don't know if I can show you it to you particularly easily, but uh, the seats are all properly lined up with the windows, which is another good thing. What I sometimes do, if I'm travelling, say, to Crewe, and this is going first, I'll get on this to Kidsgrove and then get on the 350 Kidsgrove, but I can't do that today, so I'm now going to wait for my train to arrive. something there usually brand new trains sometimes older trains uh, oh exciting class 68 number 025 and some of the new trans Pennine mark 5 so um, behind them there's a rake of x virgin and 1x anglia mark 3 coaches so that's what i mean you never quite know what you're going to get to see coming into crew there's an 08 shelter as well i see that i can just see it from the trees now that's an 08, 08, 68, 68, sorry, 868, that's me being dyslexic. And then here's the, there's some more carriage sheds. Um, we are now approaching Crewe, our final station. Thank you for travelling with London Northwestern Railway. Please remember to take all of your personal belongings with you when you leave the train. Please mind the gap when leaving the train and step onto the platform before removing heavy luggage and push chairs. If you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text the British There's Transport Police on 61016. We'll it out. sort it. See it, say it, and I never sort know which it. One it is, so if anyone Please knows, do not leave your belongings unattended. They comment. may be removed without notice. And tell me. Thank you for travelling with London Northwestern Railway. And there's load more carriages. And also, I think, that is over there, that's Blue Peter's tender. So, um, yeah, clinging to crew is always exciting. I'm now gonna go off to the Heritage Centre, so I've got a bit of a walk. So, soon we shall go and explore the Heritage Centre. So I'm now walking from Crew Railway Station to the Heritage Centre. Now it's hard to believe, but this car park over there, residential houses there, there's a big tower block which is hiding behind those trees, a residential tower block. All of this was once railway land. Just so much of Crew. You know, it seems like it's a lot today, but it must have been amazing in its heyday. There were just railways everywhere, not just standard gauge railways, there was 18 inch gauge tramway all round uh, crew works. That wouldn't qualify though because that was a narrow gauge, not a miniature railway, so we wouldn't make a series on it if it still existed, but probably would do a video, but just not under the Miniature Railway Britain series. So as I continue to walk through this housing estate, which as I said, is all former railway areas, you think Duchess Pacifics have sat here. 
where we walk today. Um, yeah, it's just strange, really, that this is how things change. But have a look at an old map of crew, and you and you know you'll be surprised just how much of crew was railway works. Anyway, I'm going to carry on walking till I get to the heritage centre. So as I walk between Tesco's supermarket and Tesco's petrol station, a bit of an unusual approach to a miniature railway, but I know we are almost there. It's just here in front of us. Crew Heritage Centre. You see they've got a semaphore signal. I think the miniature railway is just on the other side of this palisade fence, so it's busier with cars. I need to get across. A zebra crossing up there. I get across. I think I shall get across here. Let's run across the road and we should get our first glimpse of the miniature railway. You can just see, look, through the fence. So what we need to do now is uh, go and pay to get in and have a ride. Look, that's exciting, there's a tunnel. Let's go in, I'm excited now. It's a bit of an unusual shape, this site. It's like a V-shaped site around two sides of Tesco. Um, that's what I like though about miniature railways. They're always so different, you never get to you know, the same. I know we can get a better view of it. It'd be nice if a train came along. And of course, that's the main line, just over there. So here's the, the uh, miniature railway. There's visitor parking here, so I, I chose not to drive here. I thought it'd be more fun to come by train, but I could have driven here. So if you do ever drive, and there is somewhere to park, I wasn't actually sure if there would be or not. So that's why I came on the train. Okay, right, I'm gonna go and pay to go in. Paid my entrance fee. Here's one end of the miniature railway. Now, what it does, as I said, it's like a V shape. It kind of goes right up there behind the APT, which is we're going to have a look at in a minute, to a station down there. So, um, I'm not sure whether we're going to get on at this end or the other end. I haven't decided yet, but whichever way, we'll have a trip from at least one end to the other and um, possibly back again. But let's, let's just go and have a wander over here. Um, we'll do, I want to do the railway first because that's like. Thing I'm most excited about but then after we've done the railway we'll go and have a look in the APT because that looks exciting. have been in it before, came here about 10 years ago on the way back from a holiday in North Wales. I can just see the miniature trains just departing so I think we've missed that one but let's if we get over there quick enough we can watch it go past. So um, I'm just sort of blanking out everything around me because I want to get over to where the train is but we will have a, a look at everything because there's quite a lot to see so let's just watch the miniature train pass and then we'll go to the other end so there's the train coming on now length is about 600 yards I think but from one end to another isn't so far um, so it goes as I say, it goes right down there so anyway I'm gonna go to the other station and um, have a ride great to have a ride now wouldn't it but I don't think that's gonna happen for a while
So we've had our trip on the miniature railway. It's a bit windy, so I'm just going to get inside the APT to finish the video. Um, it's great fun going on the miniature railway. It's quite an unusual shape, so it's sort of V-shaped as in it goes to the end of the APT and that way, but then the site of Crew Heritage Centre is V-shaped that way around the Tesco, so it's quite an unusual place. The only other miniature railway um, I've found, I think, of this layout was the one next to Chadwell Heath Station, which we'll have to go to again at some point. So what I'm going to do, as soon as we're in the APT, I think I um, should definitely make a video, but it'll be a separate one. I'll do another video of the Heritage Centre, so have a look out for that in a couple of days' time. I'll leave you with the Barbies and Ken enjoying a trip on the APT.